Why, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You know, people have been saying that there's something the matter with my head. Well, my head is all right. So is my heart. It's my stomach that's gone back on me. These words thundered from the stage of the 14th Street Theater, New York, on Christmas Eve, 1891, during the 100th performance of the Jessup and Townsend comedy drama, Mavorning. Some of the audience tittered at the actor's utterances, thinking they were part of the play. But others sensed that there was something wrong seriously wrong. The crowd now falling silent, the actor's manager, Augustus or Gus Petou, marched from the sidelines and, apologising profusely to the audience, whisked the actor away. The actor's name was William or Billy J. Scanlon, who had already achieved immense success as a singer, songwriter, comedian and dramatist. This was the man who years before had composed the words and music of Over the Mountain, a huge hit which would later be rebranded as My Eileen is Waiting for Me. I'm always light-hearted and dizzy Not a care in the world have I Because I'm loved by a Colleen I couldn't forget if I tried She lives far away o'er the mountain Where I know she's still thinking of me Ara Kushla Mahri, were I with you? Ah, this moment, how happy I'd be. It's over, yes, over the mountain where the little thrush sings on the tree. In a cabin all covered with ivy My Eilie is waiting for me The son of Irish parents, Billy was born on the 14th of February, 1856, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Leaving school at the age of 13, he travelled to New York, where we served as apprentice to a hat maker. But Billy, who was more interested in show business than millinery, abandoned his apprenticeship and teamed up with female impersonator William Cronin to form the successful double act Cronin and Scanlon. Comedy writer Bartleby Campbell was so impressed with Billy's wide-ranging talents that he offered him the starring role in his forthcoming play, Friends and Foe, for which Billy was contracted to write all twelve songs, including two notable successes, Peekaboo and Over the Mountain. Similar productions would follow, as would the hits. Shortly after the debut performance of Friends and Foe, which opened in 1882, the sheet music of Over the Mountain was published by T.B. Harms & Co. of Broadway. It included three verses and a memorable sing-along chorus. By the late 1880s, Gus Pitou was becoming increasingly concerned about Billy's forgetfulness and mental health, so much so that he employed prompters to feed Billy his lines. On leaving the 14th Street Theatre on Christmas Eve, 1891, Gus 
walked Billy back to the Imperial Hotel, where Billy and his wife Margaret Scanlon, nee Jordan, had booked a room. Over the next few days, both Margaret and Gus noticed a marked deterioration in Billy's physical and mental health. So, having booked out of the hotel, they accompanied the ailing actor to Gus's residence on 95th Street, from where Gus called Dr. Hamilton. Seeing that his patient was staring blankly around him and was responding to simple questions in a garbled way, Dr. Hamilton recommended that he be placed immediately in the Bloomingdale Insane Asylum. Shortly after he was admitted, doctors concluded that Billy was suffering from paresis, an affliction that could render the sufferer partially paralysed for a while or totally paralysed for life. As his physical condition worsened, so did his mood, Billy often throwing temper tantrums or going into convulsions, sometimes bound in a straitjacket, sometimes fed by a tube or doped with opiates to help him sleep. Billy Scanlon remained in Bloomingdale until his death on the 18th of February, 1898. He was laid to rest in Calvary Cemetery, New York. In Ireland, Billy Scanlon's Over the Mountain went through a series of title changes and lyrical adjustments. In 1892, for example, Scanlon's song was being sung as In a Cottage All Covered with Ivy, There's an Irish Boy Waiting for Me. Or There's an Irish Girl Waiting for Me. It was the subject of even more changes on the eve of St. Patrick's Day 1912, the day the Dublin-based newspaper, The Irish Emerald, published by Fortune's Breath, a short story which included a variant of Scanlon's lyric about Ned Donovan and Jack Trevor, two Irishmen looking for gold in the Yukon. Further investigation reveals that the writer of this short story was Patrick F. Doyle from Charleville in County Cork, a regular contributor to The Emerald and to a number of other newspapers. Though Doyle did not mention William or Billy J. Scanlon by name, by fortune's breath opened with the following lines, She lives far away o'er the mountain, where the little birds sing on the tree, in a cottage all covered with ivy. My Eileen is waiting for me. This chorus subsequently replaced Scanlon's original, and it was this chorus which formed part of Johnny McAvoy's hit from 1975, My Eileen is Waiting for Me. I'm always light-hearted and easy Not a care in the world have I For I know I'm in love with a colleen and I couldn't forget if I tried She lives far away o'er the mountain Where the little birds sing on the trees In a cottage all covered with ivy My Eileen is waiting for me It's over, it's over the mountain Where the little birds sing on the trees In a cottage all covered with ivy Oh, my Eileen is waiting for me The time I bade goodbye to Eileen 
was a time I'll never forget For the tears bubbled up from their slumbers Oh, I fancy I'll see them yet They look like the pearls in the ocean as she wet her tail of And she said, my dear boy, don't forget me Till we meet here again or above Oh, it's over, it's over Where the little birds sing on the trees In a cottage all covered with ivy My Eileen is waiting for me